season for him. He lost a couple of matches this year to Gene Curry, and that was uh, two of his losses. He had three losses in the entire season, and he was tied once. Gene Curry settled for third, and this is a weight class that was dominated by the Northwest Kansas League. As we go to the award stand to see the presentations in 126-pound weight classification, we're about ready to see Sonny Rogers, the champion, step up for Phillipsburg. In second place, Shane Oaks of the Hoxie Indians, a third-place wrestler, Butch Kearns of Plainville, and Brad DeCat of Silver Lake, fourth place in the 126-pound championship. There he is, Sonny Rogers, a 1988 state champion in 321A, representing Phillipsburg. And congratulations to Sonny Rogers, second place to Shane Oaks. And Bob Smith, thank you for visiting with us, and we wish you and uh, your wrestling team the best of luck in 1989. I know you got a lot of great youngsters well, returning. Thank you very much, Lonnie. We came down for a couple reasons. To watch the Atwood, because I coached Steve Woody, and also to watch the Hill City, because my son did his uh, students teaching coaching there. Well, it's paying off, I can see that. The Atwood Buffalo's having a fine performance, and of course, Hill City with a tremendous showing in the state championships and a 138-pound Gail Brown will be representing Hill City and we'll see some of the work that Sean Smith has probably had the chance to do in the practice room and Matt Hauser of Douglas as we move into the 138-pound state championships of Kansas 321A and joining me once again is Ben Duell. Lonnie, uh, the action is picking up. These matches are getting better and better as we progress up to 138 pounds here in the state championship at 1, 2, and 3A. Matt Hauser moves in from Douglas. He gets a takedown. He scores to a nice leg pickup. We have quite a performance going on here. We want to thank our cameraman for doing such an exceptional job. Even clear off of the mat, we're right on top of the action. And the fans at home aren't missing anything in these state championship matches. And what a matchup we have here. Gail Brown, 26-0-1, undefeated. And Matt Hauser of Douglas is 20-4. Okay, and uh, Gail Brown got an escape on the edge of the mat. He got a throw, but it went out of bounds. They gave him an escape. He's moving back in. And now Gail Brown scores a takedown. He's out in front, 3-2. to two. So Douglas got the first takedown. Or rather, Matt Hauser of Douglas got the first takedown. And now Gail Brown puts the pressure on. That half Nelson is in deep. He tried to force the arm over, and Brown is out in front three to two. It didn't take him long to bail out after Matt Hauser took him down. Hauser is on the bottom side at the present time. Gail Brown is riding top. Dale made his call by the official. Three to two, it is a score. And with the lead at the moment is Matt Hauser of Douglas. All right, Hauser, bottom side, and Brown on board the crossbody ride. Once the, the wrestlers stand up in that crossbody ride position, the official breaks the match in order to prevent an injury. Hill City's wrestler, Gail Brown, in the top position, and he has the lead by a score of three to two in the match. All right, Gail Brown working with a good tight waist on the edge of the mat he really shows the strength in the arm and the shoulders down to 30 seconds to go in the first period gail brown coasting just a moment they go out of bounds with 23 seconds to go the count is gail brown three matt hauser two gail brown of the hill city wrestling program is a legitimate contender to win a, an outstanding wrestler he pinned his first opponent in a minute and 34 his second opponent in two minutes and 57 seconds gail brown advanced to the finals with a pin in four minutes and 37 seconds so an outstanding performance to this point for gail brown still undefeated this season tied once a senior for hill city and gail brown has demonstrated the strength and the ability to control his opponent look at that tight half nelson he has in from a forward position. It's a forward front half Nelson, but with a body ride for Gail Brown of Hill City. And this is a couple of phenomenally strong young men. And talk about the balance, the strength of the legs and, and the hips of uh, Gail Brown of Hill City. And I'm sure that he's got a lot of his spinning holes by riding with those legs. And we'll see how much explosiveness, what type of move he'll use from the bottom position is Matt Hauser of Douglas 
will sit in there and Douglas uh, with a lot of strength goes to the outside ankle to start off period number two and Douglas trailing um, that's Matt Hauser of Douglas trailing by a score of three to two going into the second period. You never know what kind of a strategy a wrestler is going to use from the bottom side. In this case, Brown never made a move on the whistle. He is up on his base. He's the bottom wrestler at the moment. He has a three to two lead. And Matt Hauser from Douglas is attempting with a head labor to keep Brown down on the mat and Brown is flat on his stomach at the moment. Matt Hauser with that hammerlock has the wrist tied up, has the head in the elbow, not, not the elbow, but the armpit. It's called a head lever ride. Switches off, continues to work with a head lever ride. Matt Hauser now tries to turn Gail Brown. Gail Brown knows that he has a three to two lead. He comes up standing, they go off to the edge of the mat. They're not out of bounds yet. But Brown uh, actually just simply trying to recover his base on the bottom side. Again, Matt it. Hauser of Douglas continues to work well, and Brown comes around. Does he score a reversal? He gets two right on the edge of the mat. Perfectly executed, and, and that's one of the things about a, a wrestler in a championship match. You never want to lose any type of concentration whatsoever. Matt Hauser may have relaxed using the edge of the mat to his benefit, but Gail Brown with the perfectly executed switch, and I mean perfect, there was no way of stopping it right there on the edge. A re-switch would have taken him off. Uh, Hauser now trailed by a score of 5-2 to two and is on the bottom side. So Matt Hauser of Douglas needs to get something going with 27 seconds to go here in the second period. But he'll have his work cut out for him. Gail Brown riding with the legs and a one-on-one -on -one situation right now. And also with a quarter Nelson is working and watching that move very closely, Ben. Oh, okay, and that's true. Brown is in control. We're down to 10 seconds in the second period. And Brown has that 5-2 to two lead. Look at the pressure. Brown puts on his opponent. A lot of pressure on the neck. So we'll move into the third period. Brown with a 5-2 to two lead and wrestling with great confidence. Very good wrestling taking place here in the championship round. We have an official timeout. A wonderful talking to Bob Smith. We brought a Colorado one over to visit with about uh, winning 10 state championships as a coach in 300 duels. And, of course, uh, Ben Duell, you've been in that position to win team titles and senior boys win four state championships. And now we're looking for another athlete to try to win his state championship in the 138-pound 38 pound weight classification, Gail Brown and Matt Hauser. And in the top position is Gail Brown of Hill City. And there's an excellent... Uh, move a good effort by Matt Hauser and now Gail Brown is going to try to uh, keep Hauser from getting the reversal and there you saw some excitement uh, coming off the edge of the mat and these two athletes are both intense both still hoping to be champions it's seven to two and with the lead Gail Brown of Hill City. Gail Brown is muscular he's busy he's what we call a physical wrestler he will punish his opponent out there. He's on board now with the cross spider ride. He has the leg hooked up. He can go into a banana split from here. The banana split is a move that could put Matt Hauser on his shoulders, but the official call to stalemate. Well, I think that uh, the roll through that made it look like something was about ready to happen was initiated by Matt Hauser of Douglas. He could have stood there a lot longer in that position, but he was anxious to roll on through and get it over with, I'm sure of that. The top wrestler, Gail Brown, has a 7-2 lead. He's in command. We, we have a minute and 20 seconds to go, third period. So not a lot of time left for Matt Hauser to try to find a solution to his problem. His problem is he trails 7-2. Minute and 14 seconds to go in the match. And checking that clock, that's what he was looking at when he was looking off to the side was, how much time do I have? It's what was running through Matt Hauser's mind. To be able to get something going here and so anxious to use every second possible. You can see that when you're down by five, you know you have to make every second count, and that's why Matt Hauser will be cautioned. And the officials are conferring about the situation, though. Well, it was a caution on the bottom wrestler, and we uh, simply got confirmation from the attending official, and they agree that it was a caution on the bottom wrestler. And that's Matt Hauser of Douglas wanting to use.